Welcome everybody. My name is Ron Esposito. I'm a traffic safety specialist with AAA. Today we're going to be talking about mountain biking in New York State and New Jersey. Included are going to be also non-mountain biking trails. Uh, today we have a, a great panelist. I'll introduce them uh, very shortly. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about bike safety. Uh, I'm an LCI, which is a uh, league cycling instructor for the American League of Bicyclists. And I can tell you one thing that's very important. As an avid rider, every ride before I get on my bike, I go through the ABCs. It's very simple. I check my air pressures, make sure that both of them are good. I inspect the wheels and the valves while I'm doing that. Uh, I check my brakes individually, front and back. I check them together uh, before I set out to ride. And the C stands for cranks and change, uh, chains, I'm sorry. So the cranks are both the cranks in the front, if you have a multi-geared uh, uh, bike, and the cranks in the back. We wanna make sure that the teeth are nice and squared, not triangular. We wanna make sure that the chain is tight, not too tight, but uh, is, is safe to continue to ride. The worst thing that could happen is if we have a, a, a miss or malfunction of our chain and crank. Uh, it could cause us to lock up and, and fall. So the next thing is to prepare yourself mentally for the ride and physically for the ride. By that, I mean we wanna make sure we have the right gear. I never ride ever without wearing my helmet and a minimum pair of gloves. Uh, there are people, mountain biking, which we'll be talking about today, who wear elbow pads and knee pads, and, and those things are great to have. Uh, again, those, those are up to you, depending on what kind of biking you're going to, going to do. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, some road bikes uh, bikers wear uh, bike shoes that actually clip into their, their uh, pedals. Uh, I don't use those at this point, but uh, I know that a lot of people who are mountain biking can't wear those because they have to be able to put their foot out for, for protection on falling or kicking off as they're riding. Uh, so, Basically, the main thing is, is that we want to make sure that we have all our gear and all at our bike is uh, ready to go. So without further ado, I want to introduce Andre Sanders. Uh, she has been in the biking industry for over 20 years. Uh, she became CLIMB's vice president in 2016. CLIMB stands for Concerned Long Island Mountain Bicycles. Her goals and mission as VP is to continue the growth and enjoyment of mountain biking community. Uh, she creates all levels of rise to promote trail stewardship and community. Promoting community is her specialty, as she has been the executive director of Trips for Kids NYC since 2006. The nonprofit based out of Cunningham, Cunningham Park, Queens, New York, has given thousands of kids transformative off-road cycling experiences. She is currently known as the Bike Whisperer with a specialty in teaching learn to ride. So with any further ado, Andre, would you take it from here? Certainly. Um, thank you so much. Um, are, is my slideshow gonna pop up? Can I see my slides, Ron? Mark, can you help us out? Yep, it's coming. Okay, thanks. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is such an honor. I'm really um, excited to share all this information. And I'm gonna um, talk a little bit about regular riding as well, in addition to um, mountain biking. And my focus is really gonna be on from New York City all the way out to Montauk out on Long Island and really covering um, the New York, the metropolitan New York area. Um, can you change the slide? So Concern Line um, Island Mountain Bikers is an organization that has built over 175 miles of trails, of mountain bike trails from New York City out to Montauk. Um, our, our goal is to really um, expand our uh, mountain bike environment and um, build community. Um, we're promoting the relationship between nature and cyclists. We also, like when the goals, when form, CLIMB was formed in 1990, um, the goal was to have a trail out your front door within 20 minutes, no matter where you lived. And we're pretty close, close to making that happen. And I'm going to go over a couple of uh, these special trips. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, Ron actually told you who I am, so we'll, we'll skip over that. Um, 
but I'm the bike whisperer and um, executive director of Trips for Kids and VP of Climb. So I wear many hats because um, I love cycling. My life is all about cycling. Next slide. So there's some really amazing secrets in New York City um, and the Long Island area. And today I'm gonna really talk about those areas. Um, we're gonna start in New York um, and move all the way out east. Next slide. So in New York, um, New York City has a great cycling map um, for New York City. We have over 1,100 miles of uh, bike trail in New York City proper in the five boroughs. Out of that, 500 miles of that is protected bike lane and greenways. And the greenways are really fabulous for family riding. Um, they're super protected. There's usually no cars involved um, and they're usually by the water. Uh, one of my favorite rides, uh, next slide, is uh, the Little Red Lighthouse on the Henry Hudson Greenway. It's on the west side of um, Henry Hudson and you ride all the way up to underneath the George Washington Bridge. Um, it's a really historic uh, monument and it's a really beautiful ride. The um, lighthouse has a picnic area so when you ride up there, if you want to have a day outing with your family, um, the path is a paved path. It's nice and smooth. And depending on where you start, depends on how far the ride, how far do you make, how high, how long you make the ride. Excuse me. Um, and if you don't have a bike, there's a lot of bike shops around on the Upper West Side in the area. There's Innovation on 106th Street in Columbus. There's uh, the Trek Shop on 96th and Broadway. There's Toga on 66th and West End. So really, and you know, all rent bikes. Um, and then of course, there's our, the, you know, the nation's largest bike share program, City Bike, that you can also rent bikes from. So bikes are, shouldn't be a, um, something to hold you back and should be able to get anywhere um, in the New York City area. Next slide, please. Another really fabulous family-friendly uh, place to bike is Governor's Island. Um, it's a down, the, you catch the ferry, which is, um, downtown next to the Staten Island Ferry. And it's a, I think it's a $2 fee to get on the boat, but it's a beautiful ride and you get to go right by the Statue of Liberty and you go on an island that has no cars and extra wide streets um, and a lot to do. It was uh, built, it's 172 acres and it was uh, originally a military installation and the army worked there. And then, then the Coast Guard had it for years. And when the Coast Guard moved out, they donated it to New York City as a, a public land. And the New York City uh, has taken that island and created this paradise. They have a, a hammock park. They have a hill slide built in. There's beautiful biking all over. Um, and, and if you need a bike, there's um, Blazing Saddles, which is a bike shop that the first hour of every day, they uh, give bike, rent bikes for free. And then there's um, City Bike, of course, and then you can do daily rentals. And another thing about Blazing Saddles, not only is it um, regular two-wheeled bikes, but they also have four-wheel caddies. So you can take a whole family out for the bike ride and just go and explore the island, go to the restaurants, um, really just an amazing day. And it's a full day adventure and you can stay out there from you know 10 o'clock in the morning to five o'clock when the last ferry goes out, I think it's six. Uh, next slide, please. And this I came across, this is um, a new um, entity, it's called a bike library. And it's out in Shirley Chisholm um, State Park, which is the southern part of Brooklyn near the beach or the bay. And um, it's amazing. So you go with a, any kind of ID and you can just go rent a bike at no cost and go tour the island for two to three hours and just sort of enjoy it. And it's a beautiful coastline and really bay area of a really beautiful, um, greenery and, and water. And so it's really nice, it's nice and flat and nice and smooth. So it's really um, fun and it supports uh, Bike New York as a nonprofit that's all about bike education. The way I got into, one of the things I got into the um, bike industry was with Bike New York because I was one of their original instructors. And um, it's a really amazing organization that um, is all about bike education. And they're also the ones who put on the five borough bike tour. Uh, next slide. So for the more adventurous, there is the Jamaica Bay Loop. It's about a 20 mile loop around the bay, starting um, in the Green Bay. It's starting, you get to go over the bridges and you go all the way to um, Far Rockaway Beach. You can take a whole beach day and then continue around the loop to end the back up in Brooklyn. 
you know, there's a lot of parking all around the area and um, you can ride a mountain bike or you can ride a regular bike on it. And it's uh, really a beautiful ride. You go by, you know, Floyd Bennett Park, you go by a horse stable, you go, you hit the beach and then you do this beautiful causeway ride um, on the way back. It's really, really fun. Uh, next slide. And then we're heading out a little bit east now. And now we're getting into the mountain biking terrain. So in Cunningham Park is an organization called Trips for Kids NYC. And our job at Trips for Kids is to give transformative cycling experience to youth. Being on a bike in general is just a, it's a really healthy, gives you a healthy state of mind. I've never met anybody that has gotten off a bike without being, being happy. Because when you're on a bike, you're 100% present and you're just totally there. And that's like a full mental reboot. reboot. And then you add being out in nature on top of that and um, challenging yourself to over to, you know, going out, how do you go over logs? How do you climb a hill that's got gravel on it and dirt? How do you get over the roots? And so um, it's quite this amazing experience where you really learn about you and the bike, um, uh, bike body movement so that you and the bike work in, as, a, as a one unit to, to accomplish all of these, um, overcome all these obstacles. Um, and you can do family rides there. Um, you, they, it's a weekend run out organization, it's all volunteer. You can do um, a family ride or you can become a member um, and do part of the family ride club. And that work that runs from usually June, July through November or whenever the weather's nice, um, gets too cold to ride. Um, and then if you really love it, if your kids really love it, they, we have an advanced program, which is a race team. And they race through the NICA circuit, which is National Interscholastic Cycling Association. Um, so you can go from very, very novice to very advanced. And it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. And we wear helmets and elbow pads and a full body armor on some of this stuff. Um, next slide, please. And as we start to continuing out to the east, there are, like I said, it's a, about 175 miles of trail. And I'm just gonna be able to touch on a few of them because there's just so much to cover. But one of the really cool ones, um, just these are just sort of the same ones I'm gonna to touch on, Bethpage State Park, Cathedral Pines, Cedar Creek, um, Ocean Parkway, Peconic Bay. Um, and there's, in total, we have 27 network trails. So next slide, please. Um, Bethpage State Park. So this is in Syosset, New York. And what's really cool about this park is you have um, a mountain bike trail and parallel to it, you have a paved trail as well. And so you can ride with your kids, you know, depending on who wants to be more adventurous um, on, the, on dirt or on paved path. And you can alternate between the two. And they're sectioned off into different areas depending on the avenues. And Bethpage, and the path is, um, continues goes up through trail view, um, which also goes up to um, Stillwell State Park. Next next uh, slide, please. So the, if you look at the map on the, on the left, um, on the right, so there's a, you can connect from Bethpage State Park and you head north on the trail view. And then again, paralleled with the bike path to Manetto Hills, which is about a, a five mile mountain bike trail. And then you can continue going north up to Stillwell, which is about a, a three to eight mile trail, depending on how you ride it. Turn back around and, and ride back down to Bethpage State Park. And if you decide to go south, you can take the Greenway and go down to um, Massapequa Park, which I believe is a five mile trail as well. Um, next trail, next slide, please. So, Oh, um, yes. Yeah. So, and then if you had in that same area, if you had further north, um, we go to, um, one second, I just have to move my thing. We go up to a uh, Sunken Meadow uh, beach, beach bike path. And um, that is just this really beautiful coastal ride. And you can um, do it, you can ride on the beach if you have something called a fat bike, which is a, a bike with like a two inch tire, three to three inch, three to four inches wide. They're really big and they go on snow and sand beautifully. And so you can ride all the way that beautiful coast um, going through bird sanctuaries, estuaries and all, all this forever wild environment. Um, you see birds nesting, it's really a beautiful um, environment. If you will, and if you wanna hit some dirt, 
you would come back and you can go over to um, the Makawa bike trails. And that's about a, it's a, um, we have Meadowlark and then Mac Makawa. Meadowlark is a four and a half mile loop that's semi-technical, technical meaning that there is um, a lot of rock and um, a couple of drops in terrain that you have to, you, it's not really a beginner trail because um, you need to sort of know how to maneuver some of these um, roots and drops. Um, some drops are, you know, two feet. And um, if you on these, have equal pressure level pedals, um, you can just roll right over it. Um, but it's not for the um, inexperienced. And if you wanted a, an easier bike ride, you go up the Greenway, which is the Makawa Mountain, to the Makawa Mountain Bike Trail, which is like a, a very simple early, advanced beginner, early intermediate um, blue trail, but it's pretty smooth and it's really beautiful. Uh, next trip, next please. So um, can we go back to two slides again? I actually missed something. Yes. So when we're on the Bethpage State Park, when you head south to Mascawa, Mascapequa Park, if you continue going south, you'll hit the, um, the Oceanway Coastal Bike Path that will take you all the way out to um, Jones Beach. And this is beautiful. And they just finished the, um, the DOT just finished this complete section because it, had, it used to stop and you weren't able to get to the beach. Bikes weren't allowed. So now you can bike all the way out to the end of the island. It's a really amazing um, ride. Yeah, and you can do mountain or road on that one. Thank you very much for that. And then one more slide, go again. Okay, and then as we head further out east, um, we have more, more mountain biking. And so there is a whole network of, of trails from um, a Rocky Point, Cathedral Pines, over, um, over Overton and Glacier Ridge. And all of these are, they have all levels of mountain biking in them. Rocky Point is a, a pretty challenging one. You have to be very endurant because once you're in, there's it's everything, all of our trails are all one way. Um, and so once you go in, you have to just go all the way around the loop. And so Rocky Point, if you do everything, is about 21 miles. Um, if you just do the blue trail, it's about 17 miles. But you have to sort of make sure that you have enough water and fuel and you can sort of break it up to, to ride as long as you want. Um, and then if you go to um, Overton or Glacier Ridge, Glacier Ridge is also a technical one that um, it's really fun. It's in a really tight and condensed and, the, and it's just a bunch of switchbacks climbing up and descending down. And, um, and what's really beautiful about it is you always see deer. There's so much deer in that area. Um, and there's a big buck. He's got like a 10 point buck and he always, um, they always come out to visit with you. And then if you want to extend your Glacier Ridge ride, you can add Overton onto it. So Glacier Ridge is about an eight mile trail um, with about 400 to 450 feet of climbing. And then if you cross over to Overton, you're adding another like eight or nine miles. And so at the end of the day, you've, you do about 17 to 20 miles. So depending on what you want to do. Um, and then one of my favorite, one of the hidden gems of Long Island is Cathedral Pines. Can I have the next slide, please? And the reason that Cathedral Pines is so amazing, um, I'm sorry, one more, is that you can go camping there. So Cathedral has, I think, so you can camp in a regular tent and do, you know, tent camping, or you can have RV camping with the full setup. And um, they have, I believe, like 140 sites. So and that's including RV and tent. And so when you go out there, you have a tent site, and then you have 11 miles of single track right there for you. So all you can just go and explore. And it's really all flat and windy and not much technical uh, um, trail at all. And so it's really a fun family um, weekend. Just rent out, rent, you know, rent a spot for the weekend, go set up your tent, you have you know, cookouts, there's grills right there, and um, great community. And it's really, this is, it's a great, um, it's a beginner trail with um, smooth, flat, not too technical, fun to be had. Um, and the next slide, please. So heading out even more east, now I'm gonna switch to road. Because if you like road riding and you like wine tasting, um, the Loop, the, the loop around the Botanic Bay, Peconic Bay is about a 60 mile loop. And it, and with all on the Northern Fork, 
you had all these vineyards. So I would start on the southern and then work to the northern. And um, but you just sort of park your car at um, the ferry to take it to Shelter Island and start heading south, and then southeast, southwest. I'm sorry, and then come around. And then by the time that you're back up on the North Fork, you'll be ready for a glass of wine. And you stop. You have at the, at the vineyards. You have the little taste tasting, a little nibble of something to eat. And then you meander your way back to the parking lot at Shelter Island, and it is just a spectacular, beautiful day adventure. Um, and I, you know, cycling has just been life altering for me. And I really like the the stuff around Long Island and New York City. There's so much opportunity and so much to do. It's impossible to cover it all. Um, but I hope some of this information has um, helped you sort of want to go out and explore and um if if you have any questions i'm always available uh to answer anything um but that's my presentation do can we get one more slide i think yeah and so i here i have some links of all the different um places that you can that i mentioned um their websites and such so if you have you can just go directly to them and um i that's pretty much it for me ron do we have any questions uh, well, yeah, Andre, I think we're going to wait till the end for questions, but I have at least okay. one for you. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, I want to keep us rolling and I want to uh, turn it over to Ann Lishway. Now, Ann uh, is one of our own here at AAA. Uh, she has been in the travel industry for over 10 years as a travel agent and a flight attendant. Uh, she has been the uh, travel sales manager here at AAA Northeast for the past three years and her office is located in New York City. Anne is a city girl with a country heart, primarily biking around New York City, and she loves to explore the state and beyond. Believe it or not, as a world traveler, she has visited over 35 countries, uh, and I believe she's biked in many of them, and she hopes to continue to add to that list. And can you please uh, tell us about your biking um, opportunities and information for New York and beyond? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ron. And I, I got some great ideas from Andre because I'm here in the city, so I'm a city biker. So I have at least three new trails to add to my list. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about um, biking here in the state and some of the surrounding areas and internationally to, you know, get really, uh, really exotic with it. And I think people are looking for adventures both close to home and we want to kind of, you know, look into the future and find adventures for, you know, things to look forward to as well. Um, so there's a couple of things that I um, want to go over before I really dive into um, the bike trails. Um, next slide. Perfect. So first, it, it really kind of depends on where you're starting from. I'm assuming that we have a lot of different people joining us that might be really adventuresome into mountain biking or might be, you know, beginners. Um, so I think it kind of starts with what is your style you know what kind of biking style do you have or are you looking for um i myself i would call myself a, a city biker but i probably prefer country city is more just where i happen to be um and you know for like i said for the most more adventuresome mountain biking andre went over some great options there and i'm also going to talk about biking abroad because there's actually a lot more out there than you might even really know um, and depending on the style that you're looking for, that maybe maybe that day that you're going for, you also want to kind of pick your bike, you know, depending on that. So a road bike, obviously, that's going to be a little bit more conducive to city because it's going to have those uh, smaller, uh, thin tires. Mountain biking, you know, it is the name, obviously. And then the most popular being a, a hybrid bike, um, which is sort of a, a cross between between the two, and it's good for paved paths as well as for gravel roads and things like that. And then you've chosen your style, you've chosen your bike, um, now you just have to choose your destination. So I'm gonna talk about bike trails uh, here in New York. Um, obviously Andre covered the city in Long Island. I'm gonna go a little bit further north and, and further afield in the state, as well as surrounding states, New Jersey and Connecticut have great options, other um, options here in uh, New England and my most exciting and part that I prefer most is all over the US and all over the world because um, there's some really, really great options out there. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, some trails here in 
New York. There's a couple of trails that I uh, wanted to cover. Obviously, there are hundreds, thousands of trails here in New York State. Um, so I just picked out a couple that I wanted to talk about. Um, the first one is the Harlem Valley Trail. So this is um, close, just northeast of Poughkeepsie. Um, and this has actually been, it started in the 90s um, and has been growing ever since. It's um, going to be, I think, about 46 miles in length once it's totally complete. Right now it's about 26 miles. Um, and it is paved trail, so, you know, easy ride and has great views um, of the local Columbia County and Dutchess County. And that's a really great one that's really, it's open year round as opposed to seasonal. Uh, the next trail I want to talk about is the Putnam Trailway. So this one's a little bit shorter. You can easily do this in one go. It's 12 miles um, in length. This is somewhat of a historic trail because it follows the um, Putnam Railway, which actually used to connect uh, the Bronx to um, Brewster Village back in the 1800s and, and actually I think through the 1950s about. So that's pretty exciting. You get to follow along those railways, which you'll notice a lot of um, trails, um, trails do do that, which is cool. Um, and then the last trail is the Erie Canalway Trail. So this one is, is somewhat personal to me. I found out that my grandfather, who was an avid biker, actually did this trail in its entirety um, back in the 80s. I only learned this about a week ago, so this was really exciting as part of my research. Um, he was in the Rochester area, but he did it all the way from Albany to Buffalo, which I thought was really, and I think he was in his late 60s, 70s, so, you know, a lot of respect to him. Um, but this one, it covers, it starts in Albany, it goes through Utica, Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, so obviously it's very long. You don't have to do it in its entirety. You can do regions of it and, you know, just between cities, um, but this one has a combination of paved services, surfaces as well as um, stone, dust, um, gravel surfaces. So it's got a little bit of everything, but this is a great way to really explore, you know, upstate Northern New York. So that's, that's a personal favorite of mine. It's now on my list. I think I need to follow in the footsteps and do that one next. Um, I'm gonna talk next about some trail options a little bit further afield. So in New Jersey and Connecticut, um, obviously, tons and tons of options there. Um, a quick shout out if you're looking for more trails, either in New York or in some of the neighboring um, states, you can always go to um, the local tourism website. So I love New York.com, um, visitnj.org, I believe, uh, ctvisit.com are great um, options to go to that have tons and tons of trail options. And also the um, online AAA magazine has some good articles as well. You'll find some of these trails on there. Um, so in New Jersey, the first one I wanted to talk about was the Elephant Swamp Trail. So this one is in the southwestern part of New Jersey. Um, short trail, it's about six miles, but this is gonna be a little bit more um, challenging. This is more for mountain biking. Um, it's gonna be you know uneven surfaces and gravel and such. So that's a good challenging option. Um, the next one is the Henry Hudson Drive. So as you can imagine, this goes along the, the Hudson River. Um, it is important to note that this trail is um, a drive, so it's open to both cars and bicycles. So obviously you want to be careful and be safe there. Um, but it starts in Edgewater Park. Um, it follows along the, the Hudson River um, and goes through the Palisades Interstar Interstate Park. Um, but it also has a lot of picnic areas, lovely scenery. You know, you're going along the river. Um, I think it's probably on the other side of the river from one of the trails that Andre talked about, actually. So you can see it from both sides, right? <laughs> um, and then the last one to talk about is the Cape May shoreline. Um, this is another one that's really on my bucket list. Um, it, it goes around the um, southern uh, southernmost tip of New Jersey. So it's a long trail. It's about 42 miles, but it has great coastal views. You'll you know, there's a lot of wildlife, you'll pass lighthouses. So that's a really beautiful um, area and a really good uh, good family ride that you could do at least a portion of it. Um, and then in Connecticut, there's some great trail options as well. Uh, the first one I want to talk about was, we call it the FCHT, I can never say that. Um, but you explore Farmington Valley, you know, kind of Southern Connecticut area. Um, this one's really good. It's paved, so it's it's well suited for biking but also walking and hiking, even inline skating. So a lot of good options, family options there. Um, and the Airline State Park Trail, this is close to the Hartford area. 
um, and it stretches between East Hampton and, and Putnam, also follow, uh, following along old rail beds. So another kind of historic trail there. So that's a cool option. You can even take horses on this trail, which is kind of exciting. Um, and then the last one is the Litchfield Double Loop. Um, this is gonna be a more challenging option as well. Um, this one's gonna be kind of hillier. Um, it follows a loop around the Batnam uh, Lake. Um, and that's a good one if you're looking for, you know, looking for good views, but also looking for some good exercise. That's a good one for you. Um, and then can we go to the next slide? Oh, no, I can't see the slide. There we go. Um, so we've talked about some options here in New York. We've talked about some options in New Jersey and in Connecticut. Um, I want to get really kind of exotic here and get really exciting because there are really excellent options all around the US as well as um, internationally. Um, one of our travel partners here at AAA is VBT Bison and Vacations. Um, so we're gonna talk about them because they have so many great options all over the world. Um, like I said, they're a travel partner of ours. They've been in business for more than 40 years. They have quite a lot of guided uh, tours, I believe um, 70 or so all over the world. Um, but they also have some self-guided itineraries as well. So if you're looking for something a little bit more flexible, um, they have that They have that too. They're actually based um, close to us in Vermont, um, but they have staff all over the world as well as um, guides. Um, and these are really inclusive um, kind of bike tour packages, if you will. So they're going to include your uh, bike guide as well as a guide that's gonna drive a van alongside. Um, that guide is going to be bilingual if you're if it's international speaking obviously english as well as the local language um, and they also you know provide really excellent kind of local experience and tips and everything else um, it's going to include your accommodation so they'll have boutique um, small boutique lodging um, in in some of the international itineraries you'll stay at agriturismos or chateaus which just sounds amazing i think that kind of says itself um, and it's going to include a lot of your meals and activities as well um, because you want to not only, you know, bike, get some great exercise, have a great experience, but really experience the local culture as well. So a lot of those activities will be included. And then most importantly, it also includes your equipment. Um, so this is a question that we get a lot of how do I bring my bike internationally or how does that work? Um, you don't have to worry about that. So they'll have your equipment for you. They'll fit it to your size and to your comfort. And they have different bike options as well. They have um, road bikes, hybrid bikes, even e-bikes if you want a little assistance. So they have really great options there as well. Um, most of their tours average about 25 miles a day in terms of riding, but it really does vary depending on the type of trip, where it is, um, as well as the, the pace of it. So there's a couple, um, well, I want to first talk about all of the tour options they have because they have so, so many all over the world. Uh, next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so they have, like I said, they have tours all over the world. As you can see here, they have a handful in South America and Africa, in Asia, uh, but the majority are here in the US as well as in Europe. They have um, about 20 to 25 here in the US, about uh, 40 to 45 in Europe. So lots and lots of tour options. Um, I just highlighted a couple of them here for some of those US and those Europe options. Um, but a few I wanted to mention as well, they have some new itineraries they've added on in 2021 because we are seeing so much um, domestic travel and people are really kind of looking closer to home now. Um, Colorado, Aspen to Vail is one of those. I'll actually talk about that in a little bit. Um, in Utah, Bryce Canyon and Zion, that's one I would really love to do, um, as well as some self-guided um, trips as well. So they have a self-guided option in Maine um, at Acadia National Park. Um, California wine country. So really just some really excellent options. Um, and then I also want to point out in Europe, um, we'll, we'll go through uh, one of those itineraries as well, but they have really uh, just lots and lots of options in, in Europe. And this is, I think, a good way to do it that's a little bit more approachable. Um, you know, you have the equipment there for you, have a guide for you, um, but it's another way to experience you know, experience that country rather than, you know, just going and walking around. You can bike around and cover a lot more ground as well. Um, so I want to talk through a couple of these 
itineraries just to give you all kind of a, a taste and a flavor of, of what that's like. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is one that's a little bit closer to home in Maryland. So this is the Maryland Eastern Shore and Chesapeake Bay tour. Um, this is a nice option because like I said, it's fairly close. You could drive there, really short flight if you wanted to fly there. Um, and the tour itself is gonna be six days, five nights. You'll find a lot of their uh, domestic itineraries are about that in length, you know, just under a week. Um, and this is gonna be on their kind of easy pace. So um, about, let's see, between five and 35 miles a day, depending for, for how much uh, terrain that you'll cover. Um, and it's gonna be, in terms of group size, it's gonna be no more than 21, but usually averaging between maybe 15 to uh, 20 ish for number of people so a pretty small group size which is nice um this tour um really you get to explore kind of around the the seashores and that's kind of where you'll be biking around so it's a fairly easy ride there are some slight hills um, but you're not necessarily doing you know hundreds of miles a day so it's not too too aggressive um and you get to you know you get to explore scenery a lot of local wildlife um next slide if you could and I want to just uh, go over some of the highlights as well. So um, as well as, you know, being able to explore, obviously, on bike that local area, they like to add on some activities and and include some of those things so you can really get to know the, the place that you're visiting. So a couple of the things that um, that you would do in this tour, you'll actually visit a wildlife refuge. Um, you get to take a little morning uh, sail on one of the mornings and visit uh, a maritime museum and obviously eat a lot of local seafood and local crab. Um, so it's really about experiencing, really wherever you're going, but experiencing that local area on your two wheels as well as off. Uh, the next itinerary I wanted to talk about is a little bit, it's in the US, but a little bit further um, in Colorado. I think this is a, an exciting option because this might feel, um, this might feel a little bit daunting if you're trying to plan this on your own of, how do I bike in Colorado? Where do I go? What options are going to be easy for me? So this is a really good option. It's going to be on their easy, moderate pace. So it's a little bit more, more challenging, um, but you're not biking straight up a mountain, which is helpful. Um, so this one also six days, five nights, um, and it's um, Aspen to Vail. So you get to go through a lot of these mountain towns. Um, this one is going to range from about seven to 40-ish miles a day. So a little bit longer than than the last one. And like I said, it's gonna be um, a little bit hillier. Obviously you're gonna be in Colorado, but they do specifically choose routes um, based on what's uh, accessible. So you'll go through descending canyons, valley floors, uh, mostly paved paths, but some recreational trails as well. Um, but all of that's hand selected. So obviously you don't have to do any of the, the work to figure out you know, where to go. Um, some of the highlights of this um, tour, like I mentioned, you will visit a lot of mountain towns. Um, you'll visit Aspen, Vail, Breckenridge, um, and you get to experience, again, some local flavor flavor there. So you'll visit microbreweries. Um, you get to go to the world's largest hot springs pool. I've actually been to this. It's incredible. There's nothing more you'll want to do after a long day of biking than, than visit the hot springs. Um, and you get to learn some local history as well. So you'll learn about the gold rush in the area and really get to know, um, you know, the towns and really get to know the area. So this is a great option if you're looking for something that, you know, a little bit further away, a little bit maybe more exciting. Um, you'll fly in and out of Denver for this one, unless obviously you're driving. But um, so it's a it's a pretty um, a pretty easy one to to be able to go and do, you know, a week in Colorado. Uh, the last itinerary I wanted to talk about is really we're getting um, exotic here. So I wanted to uh, cover one in Europe. Uh, the, one of their most popular itineraries is actually Croatia. So we're going to talk about um, Croatia. This option is biking around um, the Dalmatian Islands. I cannot recommend this area enough. They've really gotten, um, I would say, in the last five years or so, Croatia is really grown in terms of tourism, um, and it's just an incredible place to visit. Um, you definitely want to go um, in the summer, maybe not too hot, but this one runs between May and October, which is just a beautiful time. I mean, you could see by the picture, it's just a beautiful place to go. 
Um, so this is gonna be a little bit longer. It's seven nights, six, or seven days, six nights. Um, and it's gonna be moderate in terms of level. So a little bit longer rides, a little bit hilly. So you're gonna have some challenge um, with this one. Um, and this one, it starts and ends in split. So you're able to um, fly in and out of split. They can even add air for you if you need. Um, but it's just a, an amazing place to, to be able to explore. Uh, some of the highlights of this tour. So you actually, like I said, you start and end in split, but you'll take the ferry to two of the closest islands, to Brack and to Havar, which are really incredible islands. Um, this is when you go to Croatia. This is really where you want to where you want to explore. Um, so you'll actually be biking around these islands. So you get views of both mainland uh, Croatia as well as views of the Adriatic Sea. Um, and again, you get to experience local cultures culture. So you um, have the opportunity to learn learn Croatian and take a lesson. Um, you'll visit a stone cutting school. You even get to enjoy some home hosted meals and get to eat some. Croatian food, obviously a lot of seafood, um, and visit the the port towns and the beaches um, that are really famous uh, on these islands. So this is one, again, I mean, if this isn't on your bucket list, you should put this on your bucket list. This is a, a really, really popular um, one and a really uh, amazing one to visit. It's probably the one of the first places I wanna go back and visit and do it on bike instead of <laughs> instead of do it on foot. Um, so those are just a couple of the itineraries. Obviously, they have lots all over the world. Um, like I said, I think it's a little bit more approachable because they do everything for you in terms of equipment and in terms of planning. And you you just have to show up and ride, which I think is the best part. Um, so those are some great options, you know, in the U.S., all over the world, just depending on where you want to go. And that's uh, that's all I have. Excellent, Dan, thank you so much. That that was really informative and, and some great pictures and that Croatian uh, area just is just gorgeous, uh, just from the view. Um, I do have a couple questions to start us off. I'd like to uh, invite anybody from our, our watching audience uh, to put into the chat a question you may want to ask Ann or Andre. Uh, Andre, my question to you is, I'm a parent and I have young kids seven, nine, and say 10 or 12. And I want to start to get them into biking. What do you suggest? I, I know that as an LCI, you you and I are on the same page. Education and learning is a big part of it. But how would I as a parent go about it to, to present it and get my kids to really, really love it and enjoy it? Well, I think the key thing is um, when you plan your trips, have like when my daughter was younger and we wanted to get her into biking, um, we would bike from here down to the um south seaport and what we would do is we we would do like 20 minutes and hit a playground go play on the playground for a little bit of time play in the water park go further play in a, hit another playground right have a snack go further get something to eat and sort of t send you know set it up so that it's doable for the kids so that they're having a lot of fun and they're loving the adventure that you have on a bike and you and it's all about the kid and, and your children to make sure that that passion is shared with them. Excellent, very good, thank you. And in, kind of in the same realm, thinking on a bike is important. Uh, how do you even go about that with young kids? Like, like, how do you start? I think it really depends on your needs and what you're looking for. I mean, for me, picking out a bike, I said, okay, I'm in the city, I don't want to store a bike city bike there you go that's easy but it depends on what you're looking for what kind of experience you're wanting to have um are you looking for mountain biking are you looking for you know it just depends so i think it's looking at those needs sorry i have some sirens here <laughs> city biking um it's looking at those needs and what you um you know what you're wanting from there i and i think i'll say you know internationally as well that's where you know bringing equipment internationally is tricky, to be honest with you. It's not an easy thing to do logistically, which is why we suggest um, something like this, because you don't have to worry about, how am I gonna get my bike on an airplane and how's that gonna work, you know? Excellent, excellent. All right, so um, Andre, uh, if I wanna do a little bit of both, I, I know you talked about a couple trails that have some pathways and they have some, some areas. Uh, would a hybrid bike be the type of bike I would want to get uh, so that I could 
do the family thing, but if I wanted to veer off with an older child away from the rest of the family to go do that, uh, or do we do the mountain bike thing and kind of just go along with it on the trails and then do our mountain biking, uh, you know, age, you know, uh, to the side. Yeah, well, I mean, the base, it really depends on the trail and that you're riding. Um, Beth Page, you could definitely do those trails with a hybrid. It's the nice thing about having a mountain bike is it gives you knobby tires and it's a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter, more beef to it. So that when it when you're dealing with dirt and roots, it just really takes it. And it also has compression in the front. You can have a, a something known as a hardtail, which is we have a front fork that you um, have some cush, or you have a dual suspension where you have a rear shock and a front shock. Um, and those bikes you can take on much more rugged terrain and um, when you descend, um, go a lot faster. Um, but it really, the, uh, the hardtail bike is sort of like, if you, you could do a hybrid with get fat, beefier tires, or I would recommend a hardtail mountain bike that will do a little bit of both. One option if you decide that you wanna do a little bit more um, road riding or gravel riding is you would just have two sets of tires, two sets of, um, two sets of tires that you would switch out your tires for. You're going to go great. do a long road. You get to a smoother tire. Thanks, Andre. That's great. Uh, I have a question from from our audience, and they said, "Are the electric assist bike uh, electric assist bikes allowed on the trails?" It varies. It's every park is different. On Long Island, I do not believe they're allowed. Um, on the mountain bike trails, on the regular trails, they are allowed. I believe. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, another question. I thought. Cathedral Pines was 21 miles. Is that true or? No, Rocky Point is 21 miles. Cathedral Pines is 11 miles. Um, okay. I guess that was someone. Rocky who, Point's 21. Uh, thanks, thanks for your questions, by the way. Uh, I guess that was someone who, who was wanting to go there and, and, and want to make sure that they're getting the right, the right roadway. Um, are tours being discussed? Um, uh, and this is directed to you, following COVID guidelines. Uh, it, it, uh, you know, it, it depends, I guess, where we're going. Yeah, that, that's a great question. That's something we're we're getting a lot of those types of questions and travel, obviously, at the moment. Um, it it depends on the destination, like you said. It depends if it's domestic or international. Um, as of right now, um, there's not lots of international travel right now, as you can imagine. But um, we're seeing that um, countries are starting to open up. But in most cases, there are a lot of guidelines either possibly requiring vaccinations or possibly a negative test um, and even for both domestic and international travel actually there's a lot of added um, protocols as again as you can imagine in terms of reduced size um, distancing cleaning all of those kinds of things i will say in most cases in this kind of just a general statement but in most cases it depends on where you're going as well as where you're coming from uh, these, this VBT as well as uh, other tour companies are always going to be looking at what's the local um, government's uh, requirements and protocols, and make sure to be adhering to those at the at the very minimum. Okay, so if you're doing this yourself, you got to do your homework. And we all know everybody doesn't like homework, but yeah, you got to do your homework. Or, or we could go to AAA and we can get our our uh, our, our uh, information directly from uh, Anne and her. You, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> there you go. This 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 question here is for either Anne or Andre or or, or both. Uh, recommendations in Westchester. Is there anything there that's close uh, for those people to access? Um, for mountain biking, there's Graham Hill, there's Sprain Ridge. Um, Graham Hill is a really um, it's a rocky, hilly. I was just there on Sun uh, Saturday, and it's um, we did 17 miles and did 900 feet of climbing within like eight miles. Of, you know, so um, Sprain Ridge is also um, a really nice technical. It has a little bit more levels than Graham, um, and then there's Stewart and Sterling, so a little further north into northern Westchester for mountain biking. Okay. And, and which one would you say was, was more moderate, more, you know? Spring more, Ridge is good. And, okay. Spring right, Ridge great. is good and Stewart, um, Stewart would be good. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Uh, is there a resource that shows paved paths near RV parks uh, in the tri-state area? Maybe, Ann? Or I'm going to 
give that to Andre, maybe. <laughs> Um, I would I would look um, at the Rails to Trails um, uh, website because a lot of the paved paths, the greenways, are um, the old rails, old railroads, and they just finished a complete. Um, they completed the the Albany Rails Trail from so you can go from New York City to Albany right now. I think it's 365 miles, 713 miles or something like that. So I would look on I would look on Rails to Trails dot com or dot org. I don't know what the actual URL is, but I, that would be my suggestion. Great, great idea, great idea. I have another question. It says, my husband and I reside in New Jersey and we are interested in road bike trails. You mentioned a few, we are beginner, intermediate. Where can we find the best trails for road bikes and maybe less car traffic? I would use the resource. Um, I always think the um, Local tourism has great resources and it links to a lot of these things. So I think that one is visitnj.org off the top of my head. Um, but they have some, some of the ones I mentioned um, are would be good for that, just doing a short portion of it because um, two of those three are paved and that would probably be my my suggestion, um, but just pacing it in terms of not doing the, the entire trail. Um, but there are so many um, and they actually do, um, either sort them or kind of rate them based on difficulty paved and all of those those Excellent. elements Excellent. I, I also uh experienced myself uh when i first started i bought a book it called it's called new jersey's best 20 road rides uh under 20 miles uh, it's a great little book and it gives you places all over the state of new jersey i hope that helps all right next question we have here um is uh as a comment Blue Mountain, Peekskill, New York has mountain bike trails. And another comment we had is that there is also mountain biking in Walnut Mountain Park in Liberty, New York. Are you guys familiar with those places? And how would you rate that? Yeah, we have a, um, the one in Walnut is really fun. Um, the, there's a youth, org, youth org race organization called NICA um, that it's held races there. And um, it's a pretty, it's a, um, advanced beginner to um, moderate intermediate and you can sort of choose your leveling if you get the, the map of it um, and what was the other one and the other one was other one? Um, uh, uh, Blue Mountain Peace Girl. a Blue Mountain yeah Blue Mountain is technical Blue Mountain and don't go when it's raining because it's a mud fest <laughs> very good, um, very good one. Very <laughs> yeah all right great uh, all right, guys, is there anything you'd like to say closing up? I can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, it was really, yeah, really when, uh, you know, when When people have questions that they want to explore, reach out to your local bike shop. The people that work at the local bike shops really want to be your allies and want you to be as passionate. They want to make lifetime customers out of you. And they're going to be your allies and give you really good information. Um, so reach out to them as when that is as a go-to when you're thinking about purchasing your bikes and clothing and your questions because they know all the trails they know the road trails they know the mountain bike trails they know the gravel there's a new biking thing that's really hot right now which is gravel biking which is like a road bike with fatter tires so it's um it's all the rave and so the whole new thing and there's this new thing fat biking so there's so many variable options out there and your your local bike shops really help you to explore Excellent. Thank you. How about, uh, Ann, do you have any uh, last words for our bikers out there other than let's go? <laughs> let's go. That's it. Exactly. Um, I would uh, encourage you to start, especially for those that are, you know, more intermediate and advanced, I would start looking further afield. I think that I've even learned some great um, new trails to do in the area, but think about doing something further away or, you know, kind of taking that passion and taking it on the road. I think that's, it's a really exciting way to be able to see more of the country, see more of the world. And that would be, let's go. That's my number one, in, <laughs> my advice. I loved it. When I saw it, I loved it. All right, great. Thank you guys again. Uh, bo both of you, your, 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 your slides were great. Your, the information you gave us was great. Uh, as an avid bikist, I really, really enjoyed it myself. So I can't thank you enough for joining us. Uh, today, I'd like to make one last uh, uh, statement that for those who don't know, your AAA membership has bike roadside assistance. If you break down, break a chain, bend a wheel, get a flat that you don't, uh, unable to fix on the road, 
we will pick you up and we'll take you 10 miles to another destination to get yourself back on the road. So with that, I want to say happy biking, happy trails. Uh, thank you again, everybody. Uh, and thank you to uh, Mark behind the scenes and also to uh, Donna, Janet, and Karen who helped us put this thing together. Thank you all. Have a great day and get out there and uh, just go do it.